Lately, I've been seeing game engines as a fun way to grow and develop your skills as a programmer. Well, in my seven years of creating video games, I have never, ever even looked at the most popular engine, Unity Scratch. I meant Scratch. So today, I want to change that. This is one afternoon of learning how to develop in the Scratch game engine. First things first, never using this engine before, we need to actually learn how to use Scratch. So I gave myself a 30 minute timer to open up the application and start playing around with the drag and drop coding system Scratch uses. At first, I struggled to understand how these puzzle pieces actually fit together, but after some testing and figuring out how I can actually initialize my code, it became quite easy to understand what this game engine is all about and how I can use it to make a real game. I then built out a small little test game where you have to click on this bird and the bird will move to another random location on the screen over and over and over. Anyway, I'm feeling pretty confident to tackle creating my first actual game in Scratch and master this beginner program. So now it's time to create our game's main idea. I really liked how my bird clicker gameplay loop functioned, so I wanted to use this somehow in the main game. I like high score games and fun little engines like this, so I came up with the idea of objects falling from the sky that you'll need to interact with to destroy them before they hit the ground. Of course, some kind of point system will need to be included as well, and hazards getting in the way of you interacting with the falling objects. The idea sounds pretty good, but I need a theme. So already having used birds in another game I made recently, I decided another cool aesthetic could be an underwater deep sea game. So I designed some sprites for what the game's going to need. We got the underwater backdrop with the ocean floor where you don't want the enemies to land on, some puffer fish, which we can use as the enemies you'll need to eliminate, and a whole bunch of other sprites we'll need to complete this game's full concept. All right, I set the timer to one hour and got started on the actual game's development. When I started to build out the actual game, the first thing I wanted to tackle was turning our bird prototype into an underwater aesthetic so we have a background and a puffer fish. However, I want the main enemy, the kingfish, to be able to spawn in the henchman pufferfish. So basically, the kingfish is unkillable and will only move to the top of the screen, but he will also spawn a pufferfish to help him flood the ocean floor. The problem is that right now I don't know how to actually delete objects, so we are slowly just building up more and more fish. They're moving back up to the top of the screen, but they're not getting deleted, which is going to make this game real hard, real fast. Let's fix this by creating some clone deletion code and of course giving this game some real danger by adding in a health bar and losing health on enemies reaching the bottom of the screen. Next, we need to add in some kind of actual scoring system. So I grabbed my gold ingots I made earlier to float down our screen at random. You can interact with these just like enemies, but the ingots will actually give you points. So yeah, they are definitely something you should be keeping your eye out for. Now, the last thing I want to add into this game is some kind of clickable hazard that will punish players that are just trying to spam click everywhere on the screen to avoid losing health. So now sharks will swim in from the sides that when clicked on will bite you and auto lose you a heart of health. The last thing to do is to give the game a groovy title, create a basic landing page and submit the game for the public to play, making this my first official game ever made in Scratch. Overall, I think the game turned out pretty cool. It was a fun little game I made in an afternoon to help me understand the engine. Personally, I find Scratch to be extremely easy to pick up and use for entry-level programmers, so if that's you, I'd give it a go. I definitely won't be swapping over to use this for big projects anytime soon, or ever, but it's nice to try new engines and take the edge off to just enjoy building something new. Let me know in the comments section what game engine or coding language you want me to try next. I personally would love to create more of these kinds of videos, so more will be coming very soon. 